Snake, what makes you tense? Stressors, the factors that cause stress, can be divided into several types. They can be psychological, social, biological, chemical, or physical. In battlefield terms, that corresponds to the presence of enemies, the battlefield environment, biological and chemical weapons, and physical wounds and hunger caused by combat. Any of these factors can cause stress to build up. So you need to pay attention not only to your health, but also to your psych, especially when engaged in combat. Ever since the Iraq War, the U.S. military has deployed CSPs to the battlefield to counteract PTSD among soldiers. CSP stands for Combat Stress Platoon. They're there to care for soldiers' mental health. Each CSP, including mine, is comprised of a doctor, two psychologists, and three counselors. Nowadays, though, most cases are dealt with internally by nanomachines, the SOP system. I can't help but feel there are serious ethical issues with manipulating people's senses like that. Though I must admit, the system has led to a dramatic drop in the number of soldiers exhibiting symptoms of shell shock. Need something? What's up, Doc? You've lost a large amount of psych. You'd better take care of that right away. Got it. The primary mission of CSPs like mine is to provide care for soldiers suffering from combat stress. Sounds like a good gig. The symptoms were first identified during the American Civil War. During World War I, they called it shell shock. Today, it's known as post-traumatic stress disorder, or PTSD. You mean combat fatigue? Right. That's how soldiers have referred to it. Unlike external wounds, psychological damage is not readily visible making it that much harder to detect. The only way to diagnose it is to look at the victim's stress level and determine whether or not he's able to effectively engage in battle. In some cases, soldiers display symptoms of PTSD immediately after undergoing a traumatic experience. When these symptoms persist for more than two days, it's referred to as ASD, or Acute Stress Disorder. When they last for more than a month, it's called PTSD. Left untreated, ASD can develop into PTSD, so it needs to be taken care of as quickly as possible. If something stressful happens to you, let me know right away. There's actually a term for these debriefings where everybody gets together and talks after the mission. They're called CISDs, Critical Incident Stress Debriefings. CISDs have become popular as a stress management technique among firefighters and others involved in disaster relief. They say being at a disaster site is just like being on a battlefield. The stress you endure is as serious as a soldier's. So the concept of CIS developed at around the same time the term PTSD first began to appear. Now military and police organizations are starting to pick up on CISD. It's proving just as effective at dealing with stress among soldiers as it is among firefighters. One technique you can use to relax is autogenic training, which employs self-suggestion. What? It's a behavioral therapy in which you regulate both mind and body by changing their respective states. You assume a relaxed position and think of a formula that expresses your body's sense of weight and temperature. You then chant this formula in your mind until your body feels as if it's actually experiencing that state. Once you've mastered one formula, you move on to the next. In repeating this process, your body gradually transitions toward the state expressed in the formula and eventually you learn to regulate body and mind. Uh, I've heard something like that before. A guy from the New Zealand SAS told me about it. When it's cold outside but too dangerous to build a fire, they look at a picture of a fire instead. Said it made their bodies feel warmer. <laughs> you know, it's just another form of self-suggestion. If you think something hard enough, you can produce actual physiological changes in your body. They may have come up with that technique themselves through experience, but I suspect they had a little help from a psychologist. Kind of like you. Yeah, kind of like me. So this solid eye, it can detect and inform you of what emotions people are feeling? Dr. Emmerich told me all about it. The muscle groups in our faces move in specific patterns depending on the emotion being experienced. There's been a lot of research done on this, and the theory is being applied by intelligence and law enforcement agencies. Dr. Emmerich tells me the solid eye uses LIDAR to scan the target's face and pick up subtle muscle movements. 
and it picks up other physical reactions as well, like the way blood flows to the legs when we're afraid, or concentrates in the upper body when we get angry. Changes in pulse rate, skin temperature, sweat secretion. It takes all this information and calculates people's emotions with amazing accuracy. No kidding. And here I thought it was all smoke and mirrors. <laughs> Our emotions have a significant impact on how we act. Knowing how people feel gives you a strategic edge. It must process data in much the same way as the nanomachines in SOP. I have to say, even speaking as a psychologist, your friend has developed quite a reliable system.